Climate change is very real. Just ask the residents of the Maldives. It's being swallowed by water. Most know the islands of Maldives for lavish and remote vacations for the rich and famous. But now, the Maldives may become more known for being the first country on Earth to disappear beneath rising seas. Due to climate change, the Maldives is trying to buy time with their pocketbooks until the world's leaders reduce carbon emissions before this disaster occurs, and it's seeming more inevitable by the day. A substantial sum of money from the national purse was used to build an artificial, elevated island that will house the majority of the island's population of nearly 555,000. The Maldives spends around $10 million annually for coastal protection works, but will need up to $8.8 .8 billion in total to shield all of its inhabited islands, according to an estimate by its environment ministry. The country is taking extreme measures, but these are extreme times for the Maldives. Its islands average only 7 feet above sea level. For the Maldives, 1.5 degrees and 2 degrees Celsius could be the difference between life and death. Back in 2009, President Mohamed Nasheed dove deep, so to speak, as a cry for help. In scuba gear, he convened a cabinet meeting underwater. Down in Davy Jones' locker, hand signals were used to highlight the threat of global warming to the lowest lying nation on Earth. Coral adorned the backdrop of this meeting, which was intended to raise awareness about rising sea levels caused by the melting of polar ice caps soon threatening this Indian Ocean group of islands. Here, the president is seen signing a document that called on all countries to cut down their carbon dioxide emissions ahead of a UN climate change conference. Maldivian soldiers guarded the event, but groupers and other fish were the only intruders. 2,500 years of maritime living have shaped the culture and identity of the people of the Maldives, a country of 1,196 low-lying islands arranged into a double chain of 26 coral atolls. So flat, they scarcely breach the horizon of the Indian Ocean, and the islands are only getting scarcer and scarcer due to rising seas. The people of the Maldives are now trying something new. They're moving from the seas to the skies. They're switching from island living to a man-made platform loaded with skyscrapers named Huhumale, or the City of Hope. 16 high-rises, called Huhumale Phase 2, are built on an artificial island created by pumping sand from the sea floor. A growing number of Maldivians are moving to the high-rises to escape the rising seas. And the hope is that the City of Hope can solve some of the nation's other ailments by providing better schools and good jobs in a country where unemployment has reached 15%. It was conceived in 1997 following massive dredging of millions of tons of sand used as fill to turn two adjacent shallow lagoons into 1,000 acres of compacted sand, which is what passes for land in these islands. The two main islands can house two-thirds of the population. Huhumale is in many ways similar to SimCity, the urban development video game. It feels like a well-ordered seaside town where mosques and shops stand alongside skate parks and paved walkways, schools and roads. It was connected to Male, the capital, by a mile-long bridge in 2018. Sinamale Bridge connects Male, Hulhule and Hulhumale Islands. Due to Chinese funding, the nearly mile-long bridge was originally called the China-Maldives Friendship Bridge. This is the first inter-island bridge in the Maldives, and it's pretty magnificent. In the meantime, a Dutch design firm plans to build 5,000 floating homes in a lagoon close to the capital Malé and the international airport. The Amarla Private Islands by Dutch Docklands and New York-based Christie's International Real Estate are floating residences designed by famous Dutch architect Cohen Oltash, who is named as one of the world's most influential people by Time magazine. The Maldivian constitution was recently amended to allow foreigners to own land for the first time, but a billion dollar investment is required. Dutch Docklands has previously said that the Five Lagoon project will cost $500 million to complete. 
Dutch Dockland signed a joint venture with the government of Maldives to do so, and it's not going to be cheap. The government smartly owns a 5% stake in the deal. The five lagoons consist of 800 hectares of water. The environmental impact assessments for Dutch Dockland's first project, the Ocean Flower, is complete, and villas will be done within one and a half years. They each cost upwards of $1.5 million. The project is to feature 10 exclusive villas on portable islands, complete with their own private beach, a pool, and a jetty to moor yachts. The housing units are all floating and are all obviously waterfront. They plan to create a luxurious residential community with hotels, high-end shops, and restaurants too. So will the country of Maldives actually be the first country to disappear or should it just be dismissed as a fable of the distant future? This isn't the first time people predicted the country's demise and they were dead wrong. More than 30 years ago, environmental officials warned the Maldives would become completely submerged because of global warming-induced sea level rise. That obviously didn't happen yet. However, other research suggests the Maldives and other coral islands may actually be expanding rather than sinking. Researchers in New Zealand published a study that examined aerial photographs and satellite images of Pacific islands over the past four decades and found that most of the atolls they examined were growing in size. According to the report, erosion has not increased over the past half century as sea levels have risen. Additionally, man-made efforts such as sea walls and shore reclamation have helped stem some coastal erosion. But wave patterns and sediment from storms can also play a role. Well, if the Maldives are underwater soon, or not, it's still an excuse to go check out one of their most luxurious resorts, the best overwater villas in the Maldives, Saniva Yani. The ultimate Maldives experience when searching for a perfect bungalow. Their villas are fantastic, all with a private pool. Some even have a personal slide and retractable roof. So Nivayani is one of the best resorts in the Maldives offering overwater villas. I won't lie, so Nivayani doesn't come cheap. Room rates range from $900 to $2,300 per night. The resort is one of the most expensive in the Maldives, but it's an experience of a lifetime. There are only 24 overwater villas at Sanaviani, which is located in the Nunu Atoll and connected to a giant island, so guests can enjoy a more intimate experience. You may sometimes feel like there are no guests at the resort at all. The resort has butlers too. All personal butlers are referred to by Mr. or Mrs. Friday, as in Robinson Crusoe's books. They act like Mr. Friday and are there to make your stay comfortable. They'll book your dining experience, arrange your excursions, and even take your photos for you. He or she can be reached at any time for help, even if you lose your glasses. That happens to me a lot. So Neva's entire chain focuses on sustainability. In spite of the fact that the pools are filled with seawater and the villas are built over the sand floors of the lagoon, no damage has been done to the reef. In addition to using solar power, all waste is treated on site. In Suneva's eco-central Waste to Wealth Center, waste is recycled and the extensive vegetable garden provides organic produce for the restaurants. There's nothing like this anywhere else. The cheapest room at the resort is a one-bedroom water retreat, which is still fantastic, even though it's technically the lowest category villa. You have a private pool and a terrace, sunbathing chairs, a terrace on the first floor, a gigantic living room, a bar, an office, and two bathrooms. There's an outdoor bathroom, a shower, and a bathtub to go along with that private swimming pool. In addition, there are several glass-bottomed areas, including one in the toilet. Overall, the villa has a beautiful design. The roof directly above the bedroom can be opened with a button. From your comfy bed, you can watch the stars while it's open and it gives a nice breeze as well. You can also go dolphin watching or visit one of the nearby local islands. 
So looks like the islands of Maldives are still standing strong, but perhaps you'd be smart to book a trip there soon to enjoy the luxury, white sand, and crystal clear water before it's, well, underwater.